when the Caruso brothers needed a scorer for their new Oswego Speedway back in the early 1950s, they needed to look no further than the employee list at their other business, Northern Steel. Ed Shear, the chief mechanical draftsman and engineer for the steel fabrication company, accepted the position as chief scorer at the Speedway and for the next 25 years spent his Saturday nights on the Albany Street Hill. Being rather astute, as well as being very candid in his opinions, Ed also served as a consultant in the operation and growth of the fledgling Oswego Speedway. When the International Classic continued to grow in length and number of contestants, the huge burden of trying to score the event fell on Ed's shoulders. Ed took on the enormous task of shepherding a scoring person for each car and then making some sense out of all the information to come up with a finish. Always in the background, but nevertheless, Ed Shear was one of the pillars on which the Oswego Speedway rose to national success. Congratulations to 2014 Oswego Speedway, Mitchell Speedway Press Hall of Fame inductee, Ed Shear. Fans at Oswego Speedway will recognize the names Hemi Kuda and Hemi Hawk. Both were the creation of car owner Ed Close and his crew members over the years and were piloted by some very familiar drivers over six decades. The famed Hemi Cuda No. 69 was born in 1969, with Guy Chartrand handling driving chores through 1974. But famed Speedway Super Modified pilot Jim Champine would take over the wheel of the Hemi Cuda 69, which now also housed a Chevy engine, prior to the 1974 Bud Mod 200, promptly driving the racer to victory lane. Champine would drive for close from the end of 1974 all the way through the 1980 season. When Champagne decided to build a sprint car, he felt he needed to turn over the driving duties of the Close Modified. On Jimmy's recommendation, Chuck Siprich was hired to drive in 1981. Jerry Cook took over later that year and finished up the 81 season. After a year off, Ed teamed with car owner Wayne Miller, whose drivers included the likes of Satch Worley. For 1983, the duo fielded a car for Brian Ross, who would go on to win the race of champions that year in their car at Pocono. In 1985, Ed went back on his own and started running the fledgling modified tour with Ross as his driver through the end of 1989. In 1988, Ross and up-and-coming NASCAR star Ken Schrader were teammates in the close mods for a show at Oswego. The Reg, Reggie Ruggiero, would go on to become the close driver from 1991 through 1995, including five straight wins at New Hampshire International Speedway. After 95, Close retired from full-time modified tour competition, but would team with his son Tommy in late model competition in 1999, later continuing the modified lineage until 2013. With Close widely known for his modified accolades through the years, he did try his hand in super modified racing at Oswego. In 71 and 72, Close and crew built a super modified, which was called the Hemi Hawk, also numbered 69. The car had a twin-turbo Hemi for a power plant with Chartrand at the controls, but Chartrand didn't like the car very much because the power was just outrageous. But Jimmy Champagne did like the idea of that car. The close team had put a big block Chevy in the racer and would frequent Oswego, having Champagne jump in for one or more practices to try it out, getting the feel of it. Champagne gave a lot of tips on how to make the car better, and during that time, a couple other drivers besides Chartrand drove the car, including Mark Letcher and Merv Treichler. Eventually, the Hemihawk was sold to Ed Thompson. As modified racing became synonymous with Oswego Speedway, so too did Ed Close and the number 69. Congratulations to 2014 Oswego Speedway, Mitchell Speedway Press Hall of Fame inductee, Ed Close. Norm Hagen and Lyle Howard came to true prominence at Oswego Speedway when they happened to be joined together by popular Canadian driver Norm Makarith. Hagen first came to Oswego as a car owner in 1966 with driver John Burkholder, but in 1968 he partnered with Makarith 
and co-sponsor, Howard. Early in his career, Macarith met Howard, the owner of Howard Sunoco in Fulton, founded in 1956. The two became good friends, which led to a long-time sponsorship, eventually leading to a partnership with Hagen in 68 and the creation of the Hagen Howard Chevy. In 1969, Macarith started the season with Hagen Howard in the former Todd Gibson car that had carried Gibson to the 1968 championship. Macarith earned one feature win in 69, becoming an inaugural member of the $1,000 Club. In 1970, Norm won the first feature of the season in the Hagen X Gibson Roadster, then had a damaging accident in June. Many doubted whether the Hagen crew could rebuild the Roadster into a winning car again after that crash, but they proved the doubters wrong. 1971 was a very successful season for the Hagen Howard team with Macarith grabbing two more main event wins and 13 top five finishes overall, including a triumph in September's fall championship. Macarith drove one more year in 1972 with yet another main event victory. Following Macarith's exit in 72, Mark Letcher and Jim Gray drove the Hagen Howard Chevy before Ohio ace Baldy Baker took over in 1974. Baldy was a crafty old veteran that got 110% out of every car he drove. And if there was a win left in the old Gibson Roadster, Baldy would make it happen. Sure enough, on July 20th of 1974, the old Roadster and the Hagen Howard Chevy gave its last win to Baldy. Norm Hagen and Lyle Howard were avid supporters of Oswego Speedway and Supermodified Racing and their partnership brought to us one of the most iconic teams in Speedway history, the Hagen Howard Chevy. Congratulations to 2014 Oswego Speedway, Mitchell Speedway Press Hall of Fame inductees, Norm Hagen and Lyle Howard. Ohio's Dave Schulich was born into a family who loved supermodifieds. After driving carts for most of his younger years, Schulich launched his big car career at Lorain County Speedway and eventually Sandusky Speedway. But after just seven races, the United States Army came calling and Schulich was drafted. After returning home in 1974, Dave went racing with his brother George. But when his brother took a year off, Dave moved on and in 1977 was driving for Ray Kohler. On one particular night, Schulich and Kohler were having fuel injection troubles until a young Jim Bodner offered his assistance. In return for his advice, Bodner wanted Schulich to drive his Supermodified the next night at Lorain County. Schulich accepted and drove the car to Victory Lane. Bodner asked again the following week. Schulich accepted, again driving to Victory. The streak continued. The next event was a 50-lapper with Schulich again driving and again winning. Bodner finally said just drive it the rest of the year and they went on to win eight features. The rest, as they say, is history. The following year, 1978, Bodner built them a new car and it was that year that brought them to Oswego Speedway for a one-time effort after Classic Weekend. The team had issues, but they were hooked. And in 1979, it was three young guys with an open trailer on their way to Oswego with a show car chassis offset racer. Oswego's regulars hadn't been beaten by a stranger since Johnny Benson in 1966, but as fate would have it, Schulich came to town in June of 79 for a regular 45 lapper and the rained out Port City 75, and in a tail fit for the movies, won both shows, Saturday's 45 and Sunday's 75. To prove it was no fluke, Schulich returned for the 79 Classic and would have won it were it not for a late pass by Chuck Siprich. No surprise, a love affair with the Port City Oval developed. While Schulich wasn't always a regular at Oswego, he did race on a weekly basis for about five seasons. He drove for Jack Tobin for a year, Clyde Booth for a year and a half, and for Ron Mucci two years. But Schulich always tried to make the classic, and he very nearly won it on more than one occasion. The Shoe had second place classic finishes in 1979, 84, and 90, when he lost to Bentley Warren twice and once to Siprich. He's had top 10 runs over the span of three decades. He sat on the classic pole three times in 82, 85, and 93, with a one lap time trial in 1985 that stole the pole from friend Eddie Bellinger Jr., 
whose house he was staying at for the weekend. And one of Schulich's most memorable classic drives came in 1998, chasing down Bentley Warren with a severely bent tailpiece on the Bodner 33, coming home with a fourth place finish. Since hanging up the helmet, the shoe now enjoys watching his son Dave Jr., or the shoe too, tear up the super modified scene, including Oswego Speedway, with none other than Jim Bodner. And of course, the weekly allure of Oswego Super Modifieds is still alive and well for the Schulichs, as Dave Jr. continued his partnership with Otto Sitterly and John Nakotra, which saw him drive to a podium finish this season in the very 75 lapper his father so famously won in 1979. Oswego Speedway's continued continuity with fans and drivers of the Midwest portion of the United States is no doubt a testament to the success and staying power of the shoe, Dave Schulich. Congratulations to 2014 Oswego Speedway, Mitchell Speedway Press, Hall of Fame inductee, Dave Schulich. Jim Winks was the purest form of racer there ever was, and no doubt a fan favorite. Winks grew up in nearby Cicero, New York, and began racing at the age of 17, barnstorming the area's local dirt tracks with his number 221 modified. In an era when racing on dirt and asphalt was not uncommon, Winks made the move to Oswego Speedway and Super Modified Racing in 1970, teaming with popular car owner Jim Sewell and the heralded number 32, finishing 14th in overall points, winning the 1970 Rookie of the Year title. After a part-time 1971 season, Winks' next established full-time ride came in the Bob and Ernie June number 59 in 1972. It was in the June 59 that Winks grabbed his first top five finish in Oswego in June of that year. Winks snagged another top five run later that month in the 59, putting his name on the map as a true dirt asphalt crossover contender at the Steel Palace. Wink's momentum opened the door for a prime opportunity in 1973 when Howard Purdy and the famed Purdy Deuce came calling. Behind the wheel of the Purdy Deuce in 73, the floodgates opened for Winks at Oswego. Driving to several top five finishes in the early season, Winks finally reached the very top of the Albany Street Hill on August 4th of 1973, reaching Oswego's hallowed victory lane during the summer championship in a triumph over his dominant friend, Jim Champagne. In typical Wings fashion, the night before winning his first Oswego Super Modified feature, the popular Cicero pilot also won the Modified main at Rolling Wheels Raceway. To prove his victory was no fluke, Winks returned to victory lane just two weeks later in the deuce over Kenny Andrews. Winks' breakout regular season in the Purdy Deuce was dwarfed by his first ever attempt in the 1973 International Classic. Winks wowed the crowd to sit outside the front row for the 200 with Champagne, driving away from the eight ball in the early portions of the race. Winks and the Deuce dominated the Classic in 73, leading until eventual winner Kenny Andrews snagged the top spot around lap 180. Winks faded to eighth by race end, but no doubt made his mark on the Classic. Winks returned with the Deuce in 74 and continued his winning ways, winning back-to-back -back features in August, leading to the International Classic. Again, Winks shined in the 200, this time going one step further to put the Purdy Deuce on the Classic pole position. After leading the first 16 laps of the 200, Winks would hang on for yet another 8th place run. Despite falling short in the Classic, Winks remained tough through the end of 1974, with three more top five finishes to end the season, including a win in October 5th's Twin 50s, joining his friend Champagne as a victor on the evening. The October 5th, 1974 victory for Winks and the Purdy Deuce would be the final for either at Oswego. At the conclusion of 74, with the Deuce now out of the picture, Winks purchased the former Austin Brothers number 71 and brought it to Oswego as number 22. Winks ran the 22 through 1975 before hopping in the Solvay Automotive number 04 for part of 1976. After two part-time lackluster seasons, Winks returned in 1977 as the driver of the Doug Duncan number 07 and quickly returned to prominence. Winks finished in the top five seven times with the Duncan 07 in 77, including a career best third place finish in the 77 Classic behind Warren Conium and Steve Joya. Winks drove to five more top five finishes with Duncan in 1978, including yet another top five run in the 78 Classic. After taking a year off in 79, Winks and Duncan returned in 1980, with Jimmy capturing his final top five finish in the race that gave him his first win, the Summer Championship, 
along with a 10th place run in the International Classic. Jim Winks ended his Oswego career with five wins and 31 top five finishes from 1972 through 1980, including five top 10 finishes in the International Classic during that span. Congratulations to 2014 Oswego Speedway, Mitchell Speedway Press Hall of Fame inductee, Jim Winks.